Hello and welcome to the next lesson in this tutorial series on learning how to program using Scratch. Now we've looked at a range of skills, programming tools and keywords over the last few lessons and in the last lesson we looked at combining a couple of these so that we could combine understanding about strings and how to pull out letters from strings and work out the length of them with our understanding of loops and using a definite loop. In this lesson what we're going to do is put all that together, adapt the program we wrote in the last lesson slightly to create a palindrome checker. Now if you don't know what a palindrome is, it's simply a word or string that reads exactly the same backwards as forwards. For example, if we have a look at some of these, we can see all of these words and these numbers as well are palindromes because if you read them backwards, looking at the last letter and going back towards the first letter, they read the same. So the word noon is the same backwards as forwards. The word race car is the same race car backwards as forwards. So that is what a uh, palindrome is. And we're going to be um, checking to see whether a word or a number that the user enters is a palindrome. Let's have a look at the program that we wrote last time. And you can see here that we've got the um, first part of it asking what the person's name is and then storing that in a variable name. And then we had a counter which keeps track of which letter we're up to in their name. And then a loop, a definite iteration here using a repeat block that repeats as many times as there are letters in their name. So length of name gets the number of characters from their name. And so if they've got eight letters in their name, then it will repeat the next instructions eight times. And those instructions are simply to say the letter that's at the position counter in their name. And position is uh, the counter is just simply a number which increases by one each time we repeat the loop. So in that case, what we uh, ended up with is to demonstrate this in case uh, you haven't seen this program for a little while. <coughs> Excuse me. If I enter my name as Justin, uh, then it will spell out my name one letter at a time uh, like that. So it's repeating um, six times in that case. I have six letters in my name, so it repeats those instructions six times. See the letter and then increase the counter so we're looking at the next letter and so on. So how do we adapt this code so that we can check to see if it is a palindrome? Well, there's a few things that we'll need to do. I'm going to just reduce the size of the preview there so I've got a little bit more room for my code. And the first thing I'm going to do is just pull out the contents from the repeat block because we're not just going to be repeating all the letters. We will go through the length of names. So if there are seven letters in their name, we are going to have to repeat something seven times. But we're not just saying the letter. What we're going to have to do is to take the last letter from their name and put that into a new variable and then take the next from last letter in their name and put that in a variable. So what we're basically doing is pulling the letters from the end of the string and putting them in reverse order into a new string and building that string up. And then we can check to see if those two strings are the same. So we're combining our understanding of loops, our understanding of strings and string lengths, as well as also um, our concatenation from earlier on. So there's a lot of programming techniques we've learned over the last few lessons all coming together. If you are looking at this video on YouTube thinking, where are these lessons? Well, there is a playlist and this is a part of that playlist. I suggest you go back. Alternatively, you can have a look at the computerscience.click website and that website is where this course is hosted for free and it allows you to work through that course and many others as well, uh, earning XP and completing quizzes. And if you get to the very uh, last quiz and you pass that one successfully, then you get a certificate with your name on for completing this whole course. And this course, it builds up your programming skills so that you are able to understand some of the or the main building blocks and tools in the world of programming, whatever language you end up using. 
So to start with then, what we need to have is a blank variable, a blank string variable, that we can rebuild their name in reverse. Let's make a new variable and we'll call this reversed. There we are. And before we start doing the repeat, what we'll do is we will take that reversed variable and make it equal nothing. So I'm going to remove the zero from that so it is completely empty, nothing in that at all. So now we can do the repeat length of name. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the last letter of their name and we're going to add that or join it or concatenate it to the variable reversed. So let's just grab a join block here because we are going to have to join something to the reversed variable. Now, of course, to begin with, reversed is empty. There's nothing in there. We've just made sure of that. So we are going to add to that whatever the last letter is. Now, this is a bit of a problem because, of course, these two blocks of code here that we had earlier on take the counter, which counts from one to however many letters there are in their name, and it uses that counter to go through and pick out each letter in order. But we want to do that backwards. So how do we do that? Well, let's say they had six letters in their name and we had a counter that's going from zero to the number of letters in their name. What we could do is say the counter is equal to the number of letters in their name minus the counter, uh, minus uh, the zero to begin with. And then if counter goes up by one, then it's minus one. If counter goes up to two, then it's minus two letters from their name. So let's see how we can do that then. And let's move this one down here. Um, I'm going to take that out and get rid of the hello for the moment. So we need to set the counter uh, to zero to begin with, because we're not taking any letters away from the end. We want to get that last letter. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to duplicate this length of name here. And I'm also going to grab this letter and bring that down here. So first of all, we're saying here, join the empty reversed variable with the counter so that's one, then two, then three, that position in their name. Except it's not the counter that we are wanting to get. It is the length of the name minus the counter. So let's use length of name and grab a minus operator and put this together like this and put that in there instead. So let's have a look at this uh, line of code we've got here. We are taking our empty string reversed and we are joining that with one of the letters from their name, but which one? We take the letter that is at the position length of name minus counter. Let's say the length of the name was six characters and counter starts at zero. So we're going to take the letter from their name that's at position six minus zero. Well, that's just six. So we're taking the letter at position six. Now we're going to make the counter go up by one. So let's say that the counter is now one. So now we're going to uh, take whatever is in our reversed string and we're going to join that with the letter in their name at position, length of name, six minus one. 6 minus 1 is 5. So that means we'll be taking the letter at position 5 in their name. Then the counter goes up to 2. So now we're taking the letter from their name that's at position 6 minus 2, which is 4. And then it's going to be position 3, 2, 1, and so forth. So that way we're going to be able to pull out each letter from their name, but in reverse order. So let's just set now that variable reversed to equal this 
join this concatenation here. And then of course, once we've done that, we need to increase the counter by one. Now this will give us at the end of this program now, two things. We'll have the first variable name that contains the name as they entered it originally. And then we'll also include in the reversed string, the reversed version of their name. Let's just output that so we can see how that looks. Let's just do a quick output, a quick save block at the moment at the bottom, and we'll put the reversed string in there for five seconds. Let's see how that one looks. Let me run the program and I'm going to type in um, my name, Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, and that comes out as Nitsuj. So that's coming out in a reversed format. Let's try that again with something else. Let's just do ABC and there we are, CBA. So we're able to reverse the string that they enter by doing this. But that's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for now is to see whether the reversed string is the same as the original string. If it is, then it is a palindrome. So remember, a palindrome is any word that is exactly the same once it is reversed. So what we need to do here then is to have an if question. Now, thinking back to some of the earlier tutorials in this course, can you remember the proper word for the if block where we're asking the computer to decide on what to do next? If you can remember the word is selection, well done. It is selection where we're giving the computer a choice of what code to do next. So the selection block, if we just go to the if block here, is how we can get the computer to decide what to do. So if what, now this happens after the end of our loop, of course, we've done the loop, we've reversed the original string. Now we need to know if the original string name is equal to the reversed string. So let's grab the equals block from operators, put that in here and just choose those two variables. So is the reversed string equal to, or the same as the name string that we had earlier on? If it is, then we can say that it is a palindrome. So let's just say there, that is a palindrome. And then what we'll do, I'll just duplicate that block, put it down here and say that is not a palindrome. There we go. And I'll just put a full stop at the end of that. So there we go. Let's run this program now and see how this works. Let's just stop it and run it again. And I'll type in my name, which I know is not a palindrome. So there we are, that is not a palindrome. Let's try Anna now, because we know Anna is a palindrome. And there we are, that is a palindrome. Let's try it again. We had a race car as another one. Let's type in race car. And that is a palindrome. Uh, let's try another one that isn't. Let's try Stegosaurus. So Stegosaurus, I think that's how you spell it. Um, and that is not a palindrome, no. So we can see that we can do this with strings. We can also do it with numbers. So let's type in one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that is a palindrome, there we are. So um, that is the palindrome code. Now I'll just zoom out slightly so you can see the whole thing in one go. There you go, hope you can see that. So we've used strings, we've used input and output, we've used um, length of string, we've used substring, that's grabbing uh, characters or letters from a string. We've used definite iteration with a loop that repeats a definite number of times. Um, and we've also used selection. So if something, then do this, otherwise do something else. So in this one program, there's actually quite a lot of the core programming techniques that you will need to know whatever language you actually end up programming in. And that's an important point. I mentioned it in a previous lesson. But programming doesn't have to be complicated or difficult. Programming is basically just a few simple building blocks, just like Lego bricks. Yes, you get the odd fancy Lego brick that does something, just one specific thing, perhaps something special, a door perhaps, 
but a lot of the Lego bricks that we use are just the same basic 2x2, two 4x2, by 1x1 two, by two, one by one blocks. And yet we can put those together in an almost infinite number of different combinations to make everything from a stegosaurus to a windmill. And in programming, it's the same thing. These building blocks that I've just shown you here can just be put together in any combination to do anything you want. And whatever program or game you think of, whether it's an app on your phone, a computer game on a console, or an application like Word on a PC, you'll find that at its heart in the code are these very same programming techniques. Variables, string manipulation, loops, selection, they're all there and that's how you make programs. Now, the next stage in this course on the computerscience.click website is a quiz. Looking back over the um, loops that we've just been looking at and this palindrome uh, game as well. So perhaps what you might wanna do before you take that quiz is just have a go at doing this palindrome um, lesson yourself. So have a go at trying to build this palindrome uh, game or app if you get stuck, don't worry, have a go, do your best effort, and then come back to the video and just check those bits that you weren't quite sure about um, and see where it is you went wrong. One thing to remember is that in programming, you will make mistakes. It's natural, it's what you will do. Um, if you are learning to ride a bike, you know you're gonna fall off and graze your knee. If you don't, you're probably not trying hard enough or you've got training wheels on still. In programming, you will make mistakes, it will go wrong, it will do something completely different to what you expect. Um, that's natural, that's normal, it's not something to worry about. All you've got to do is go back and see if you can work out why it's doing what it is doing and what it is you can do to fix and correct that. So don't worry about making mistakes, just have a go and then compare my code with yours if you get stuck. So when you're ready, um, good luck with the quiz and I'll see you then in the next lesson very shortly. Bye for now.